Hello, in this video, it's the next video in simple linear regression, we're going to look at the coefficient of determination. And as a reminder, the model we're using is this. We're assuming that our y dependent variable is essentially a line, that, and that's our independent variable, with some air. And that's what the epsilon is. So it's essentially a line plus air. So it fluctuate, fluctuates around the line. In this video, we only need the standard assumptions, which that the mean of epsilon zero, the variance is sigma squared, and uh, x i and x j covariance is, in, is zero. Now, as a reminder, in a previous video, we partitioned the total sum of squares into the regression sum of squares and the residual sum of squares. We also examined this that that if the if it looked like this, so we plot our data and we fit a line and it's positive, or it could be negative, but the, the key point is it's not zero. <clears throat> we showed that the regression sum of squares is close to the total sum of squares, and the residual sum of squares is significantly less. The model is useful in this case. And when the slope is around zero, meaning the model is not useful, the residual sum of squares is very close to the total sum of squares. And the regression sum of squares is much smaller than these. So it makes sense that maybe we can develop a, a, a number that tells us how useful the model is. And that's what the coefficient of determination is. So it is this. R squared is the sum of squares regression divided by the sum of squares total. And in scalar form, it's this. And so, remember, this is the total variation, and it's partitioned into these two. And, and when the regression sum of squares is close to the total, it's pretty close to 1. So when r squared is close to 1, then it says that the model is useful. Now here, um, the regression sum of squares is significantly smaller than the total and the residual sum of squares. And it says that this is it, it approaches zero. So when R squared is closer to zero, the model is not useful. <clears throat> now some alternative uh, formulations for this is this. Since the regression sum of squares is, you know, if you subtract that over as the total minus the residual, we can replace that here. And then, and then put that over each, and you get 1 minus sum of squares residual over sum of squares total. And this formula here is often used in place of this, but they're the same. And as a quick reminder, r squared is between 0 and 1. And the model is useful if, r squared, if the coefficient determination is significantly more than 0. And I'm going to leave that vague because we'll touch upon that in later videos. But if it's not zero, then the model is useful. And if it, it is close to zero, then the model is not useful. And a perfect fit means that R squared is one. Now, some like to think of the R squared as a signal to noise ratio. When the signal is high and the noise is low, then R squared tends to be close to one. And, and it's the opposite. If the signal, meaning the good noise or variation, is low and the noise is high, then it tends to be close to zero. And this is how people can think of it like that. So the sum of squares, the expected value of sum of squares regression is, is the expected value of this. In previous video 10, we showed the sum of squares regression can be written like this. So when we take the expected value, the expected value of beta 1 squared hat, that is, we use the variance plus the expected value of beta 1 hat quantity squared. And we know these quantities, that's sigma squared over SXX and beta 1 squared. And then of course, don't forget the SXX out front. And then when you multiply that in, we're left with this. Now, the expected value of the sum of squares total, the expected sum of squares regression times sum of squares, expected value of sum of squares residual. Well, the expected value of sum of squares regression, we calculated to be this. 
And this is, if we were to divide by n minus 2, then it'd be an unbiased estimate for sigma squared. But we're not, so then we just get n minus 2 sigma squared. And in previous videos, we did these calculations. So then this simplifies to this expression. Okay, so now this next step is why people think of R squared as a signal to noise ratio number. So R squared is roughly equal to, approximately equal to, the expected value of sum of squares regression over the expected value of sum of squares total. Now it's not equal because this makes no sense. You can't do that. You know, the expected value of R squared is not the expected value of the numerator divided by the expected value of the denominator. But one can appreciate that it might be close, and that's the argument that they use to use this. Um, some expected value sum of squares regression was this quantity. Expected value total was this. Now we're going to multiply this whole number times 1, which doesn't change this quantity. So you multiply that in and you get this, right? Now, for large n, when n gets large, this goes to 0 and this goes to 1. So then we take what's left over is this, right? This just carries over. That's 1 plus this. Now, this piece here is the signal to noise, right? But the slope and how spread out the x's are, the s, x, x. If those are large, then the signal is good. It's high. And, um, if, and n sigma squared is the noise. So this ratio, um, they sometimes call it omega, 1 plus omega over 1 plus omega. So if the, if the signal's high, the noise is low, this number's big. So we have a big number over a big number plus 1. So it approaches 1. Now if the signal is low and the noise is high, this is close to 0, which then makes this whole number close to 0. Anyway, so that you will sometimes hear R squared is a signal to noise ratio statistic. And so that this is kind of why they think of it like that. Now, one some notes though, R squared may be um, made large with a large slope, right? or a large SXX. That means you spread out the X's, spread out your data, right? And note that a large SSX can be good because it makes the variance of our estimate, our slope, um, small. And so when you, do when you do tests and confidence intervals, then they're more powerful. The confidence intervals are tighter around our estimates here, right? If this is large, then the overall number is small. But it may artificially inflate our square. So that tells me that R squared may not be a 100% good reliable source or number to use to look at overall model usefulness. Okay, just a word of caution. All right, well, in, in later videos, we'll touch upon R squared in, in more detail, but I just wanted to introduce it, and this is, a, I think, a, an okay introduction. And so that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.